Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have back here with us Ken Collison. Ken is Chief Operating Officer of Ucor Rare Metals. Ucor can be traded as UCU on the TSX Venture and it also can be traded as UURAF on the OTC. Thanks, Ken, for being back here with us today. Yeah, it's good to talk to you again, Jeb. Ken, could you give us an uh, introduction to some of my listeners who may have not heard the UCOR uh, story yet, a little bit about a, the background of the project and where it's located? Sure. Uh, UCOR, they have several properties, but the property that they're concentrating on is the Bocan Dotson Ridge property. Um, it's a heavy rare earth property. It's about 40% heavy rare earth as compared to, say, Mountain Pass. It has 1% heavy rare earth. So 40% of the rare earth in the Dotson Ridge deposit are heavy. Uh, and, of course, heavies are the ones that are important and the ones that have the higher values. It's located on the southeast end of Prince of Wales Island. Uh, Prince of Wales Island is a, a large island uh, about 35 miles from Ketchikan, Alaska. So it's in southeast Alaska. And uh, we're in the process of uh, starting up a feasibility study and uh, taking this project through to construction in the next couple of years. Can the company recently announced a proposal from the Alaska state government to um, assist with the funding of, of the project. Could you give us some more details uh, 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 into this funding? Yeah, Alaska is kind of unique. Um, they're very resource friendly and they have an agency called ADA, which is the Alaska Industrial Development and Export Authority. And ADA's role is to promote employment and development of industry within the state of Alaska. Uh, for example, 20-odd uh, years ago, they spent $265 million and built the road and the port facility for the Red Dog Mine. They issue bonds for this, and so it doesn't come out of the state treasury. And then they lease the, the in this case, the port and the road back to Kaminko at the time, which is now Tech. And they pay that back over a long period of time, which is, I don't know, 20 to 30 years. So it's, it's very unique. And uh, when you look at Bocan, uh, we've approached Ada and they've agreed. And what they do is they, can, they look to see what is possible to be bonded. In our case, it's the surface facilities. And so they can pay three quarters of the cost of anything that's bondable, as I said, the surface facilities. And so this is very, very significant. They'll issue the bonds, and they'll be in partnership with a bank or some agency that sells bonds, and then they'll own the facility and lease it back to us. So instead of us spending you know, all that money up front, uh, we get to pay a lease off over 20 years, or whatever the term is. And they're low interest rates because uh, the ADA agency uh, has a double uh, A plus uh, bond rating. And this, what this does is it moves that money from year minus one, which is a construction time, and spreads it over 20 years. So this has a huge impact on your rate of return and on your net present value. And so, again, Alaska is very, very unique, very resource friendly, and uh, they have a program like this, which as far as I know, doesn't happen anywhere else in North America. Can, can you give us a little more, uh, some highlights on the support of the Alaskan community and the, and the, local, and the, and the politicians for the UCOR project? Yeah, the support here has been great. Uh, when you look at it on the political side, uh, last year there was a resolution uh, that went through the House and the Senate to support the development of the earth industry in the state. It, everybody, every member of the House and every member of the Senate voted in favor of it, which is very unusual to not have any dissenting votes and really shows the great support for this industry. Uh, locally, uh, we have great support on Prince of Wales Island in and around Ketchikan. Uh, an example is that the uh, natives on Prince of Wales put together a proposal and had Senator Mikowski and Senator Begich, the two federal senators from the state, uh, take it to D.C., and the proposal was to build a road to our site. And we weren't aware they were doing this until they sent it to me and said, hey, can you take a look at this before we send it to our senators to get it through? 
And so that's just an example of the type of support we have on the island and on Gravina and, and Navala Island where uh, Ketchikan is. And so, again, it just uh, makes the project a lot more fun and unique to have such strong local and state support and federal support from our two federal senators. Ken, in 2013, uh, UCOR published a preliminary economic assessment. What are the next steps after publishing this document and to get towards, uh, to get to, to production? Okay. A number of things that will be happening this year. Uh, first, on the ADA bond and the resolution for that, uh, that's currently in the Land and Commerce Committee. They're meeting this afternoon. From there, it'll go to the Senate floor and then the House floor. And that, you know, they uh, sit until around the end of April. They only have a 90-day session here, so that's going to move through quite quickly. Also this year, we'll be starting our permitting process. Uh, we currently are doing finishing up the engineering required to submit our plan of operations to the Forest Service and kick off the NEPA process, the federal process. Hopefully, our, you can't predict how long it's going to take to get permits, but if any property should go quickly, this one should, because it's underground, we'll have a very small footprint on surface, and because of the ore sorting technology we're using, uh, when the mine closes, there'll be no tailings on surface, which, again, I think is kind of unique and should expedite the permitting process. We'll be doing a bit of metallurgy. Uh, I like to say we know how to bake the cake. Uh, we just want to see if we can make it a little better and a little cheaper, so we'll do a bit of that, and then we'll do our pilot plant. And at the same time, uh, we'll be starting our feasibility study and uh, getting that done over the next 9 to 12 months. To feed into that feasibility study, we'll do a, a bit of diamond drilling on site uh, to move the inferred resource into indicated and possibly add a bit because we're going to stick a few deep holes in. And we'll do some geotech drilling to get the geotech information we need uh, for the engineering for the feasibility study. And so it's going to be a busy 12 months. Um, you know, right now the main objective is to get the bill through the Senate and the House, and so that's what I'm doing here in Juneau now, uh, visiting with legislators, explaining what UCOR is, explaining what the resolution is and why it's there. It has to go through the legislature because ADA, if they're going to uh, do a project larger than $20 million, they have to get legislative approval. And so that's what they're doing now. Ken, as we can conclude, you've built several mines before. You've been in this in mining industry for several decades. Uh, from your experience, why does the Bokan Mo Mountain, why does it have a good chance of getting into production? Well, when I first, uh, excuse me, when I was first approached by UCOR, being an engineer, the first thing I looked at is what's the ore worth, uh, and was very pleasantly surprised. And so, yeah, I said, I'd like to get involved. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I've been very lucky in my career. I've got to build a couple mines and expand a couple mines and do that type of thing, which is always exciting. Uh, there's nothing more gratifying than going to a site that's uh, bush and two years later seeing a couple hundred people working there supporting their families. And so I agreed to get involved in UCOR and uh, they're having a lot of fun. You know, it's a very unique project. It's in southeast Alaska where I moved to, to 18 years ago and I've lived here uh, until about the last eight years when it's become part-time because of uh, the, the work in Vancouver for UCOR and others. And our family's up here, so the, it all just fit together really, really well. It's a very good project. It's got a very good ore body, and uh, it's an opportunity to build one last mine. Ken Collison, Chief Operating Officer of UCOR Rare Metals, which can be traded as UCU on the venture and as UURAF on the OTC. Thanks so much for being back here with us today. Yeah, thanks, Jeff.